And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you a guest that I've been following on LinkedIn for quite some time. And this guy has been putting out some amazing content, just very inspiring, very uplifting. And I was, I was like, man, this guy, I have to connect with this guy. And so we reached out to him and lo and below, lo and behold, here he is, Dustin Dale. Guys, y'all give it up for Dustin. Thank you. Can, thank you. can you hear your fan club a clapping, sir? Yep, I hear all five of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's number six, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dustin, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do with us. Yeah, thank you, Gary, for having me. First of all, it really is a pleasure. Uh, and being a speaker, anytime you get to talk, you take advantage of it. It's like a politician who gets to speak. You'll never hear him shut up. So <laughs> I always get an enjoyment doing podcasts. But yeah, so I'm Dustin Dell, um, professional keynote speaker, motivational speaker, uh, two-time author, and behind the scenes, uh, leadership consultant, executive coach. So sometimes I just tell people I do a lot of things and help a lot of leaders. Much easier to explain. <laughs> I like how you did. I just help people. I just, you know, I, I walk in, I make things better, add value, and that's who I, I like that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Simplify well, it. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, Dustin, I, again, I, as I mentioned, I've been following you on LinkedIn. I've checked out your website. And as you mentioned, you, you have two books and I've ordered those and I can't wait to dig into these two books. And, and the concept of your book is servant leadership, which I find to be one of the most underutilized concepts in, in you know in, in all industries across the board and so I, I love that you're speaking out and you're championing this concept um, and it's more than a concept I don't want to reduce it to just that but so you know I've been following you I love what you're doing I think it's very uplifting very motivating and so I'd love to peek behind the curtains of these amazing leaders and find out what inspires them and so I reached out to you ask you those questions hey what inspires you you came back with some amazing content. And so I want to jump to the first one real quick, if you will. So you said servant leadership in the workplace as a culture inspires you. So share with us what that means to you and how that inspires you. You know, we spend the majority of our life at work, especially in America. Um, we're, we're one of the longest working countries out there. Uh, a lot of other, you know, countries and, and stuff embrace retirement. We seem to you know, not embrace it as much. So, you know, I spent 10, 10, 11 years in corporate America as a senior level leader, you know, worked up through the ranks. But the one thing that always drove me nuts was, you know, the word with them, what's in it for me. Mm. And, you know, that's a lot of companies have that culture. You know, unfortunately, it's, it's a lot of our society, what's in it for me. And, you know, you go to work, you collect the check, that's what's in it for you. You know, that's that's how people think that's the mentality. Right. And like in my early years, when I started to hear about servant leadership, I was intrigued because there really isn't a definition that you define servant leadership as. There's been multiple attempts. And, and if you Google it, there's 50 different um, ideas or concepts or philosophies. But there's really not one singular phrase or definition of servant leadership. And the reason I love that is because it's very situational based in how mm -hmm. I serve you. And I think that's that's where companies need to embrace that. And I think that's where companies get it wrong is situational servant leadership. You know, so how I serve you may be creating some really tough expectations for you because you thrive under pressure. You know, so you could simplify it and say it's knowing your team and how to how to operate and motivate them. Um, but when you think about servant leadership, to me, it, it even gets deeper than that because it's not just professional, it's personal. Mm. You know, like I want to know about your pain so I can take you to the victory. You know, you, you can't you can't get to the victory without the pain. You have to know, you know, what makes them sad, what you know, what their childhood was like. And a lot of people act the way they do based on their childhood. Mm -hmm. So when I work with a, a leader one on one or a company trying to help create culture, like first question I'm asking is how is everybody's childhood? Like we're going to go down that path because what we don't understand is behavior patterns. Mm -hmm. Right. So part of my my background is in psychology and behavior patterns are so crucial to fixing leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm such a stubborn employee and I'm aggressive and I 
I just can't take feedback very well. I guarantee there was something that influenced you in your childhood or along your childhood that created that environment. And so we become manipulated as kids. You know, think mm. about parents. Our job is to teach our kids how to act, hopefully the right way. <laughs> hopefully they turn out the right way. But that same concept applies to leadership. And mm -hmm. when, you, when you take somebody who's brand new into leadership, they're a kid, right? Not disrespectfully, but they're, they're not matured yet. Yeah. And so if you have a bad leader who's a micromanager and that's how they operate, that individual now is impressed upon micromanaging is, is the right way to lead. So that's why I'm so big on creating servant leadership cultures, because all mm. it takes is one bad interaction and you have a lifelong bad leader, but it takes one good interaction and you have a lifelong good leader. That's 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 so smart. And, and Dustin, I love how you kind of like you shift this definition of servant leadership and you and you add you had a really interesting approach to it where it's it's how can I serve you best? What does that look like in, in the situation? And I honestly I never thought about servant leadership as, you know, hey, if you if you need some tough goals, if you need some tough love, then that's how I serve you best. Or you're creating better experiences for these new leaders, these young leaders, so that they can have better examples to follow. That's how you are becoming a servant leader. Dustin, yeah. this is this is like <laughs> this is revelational. This is transformational. I'm I'm really excited about your your uh, kind of approach to this. I, I I had not thought about that before. It, it's simplifying it. And I'll tell you, um, if you really follow my content, I'll tell you, uh, to me, motivational speakers are the biggest liars on earth. And I can say that because I am one. And, and, it, and it came from my friend because it, it, the reality of it is we see all these people that have, you know, massive followers and success and this and that. And here's, you know, the Wizard of Oz to it, the man behind the curtain. What it boils down to is just simple behaviors. Mm. You know, it, there's nothing fancy what we're hearing and what we're seeing. It's just, can I connect with you quicker than everybody else? And can I really understand how you operate? Like that's the base root of, of human interaction and right. specifically in leadership. So for me, it's like, you know, the things I talk about, I always want to make sure that audiences know I didn't invent it. I'm not coining it. I'm not trademarking it. It's been around forever. Some of us just are able to, I'm going to say, get the BS out of the way and, <laughs> and focus on what really is there, which is the human. It's a yeah. human, human aspect. So, oh my gosh. I, and I love how you've, you, you've, you've simplified it so well that it is easier to really grasp and, and, and understand. And that's that human behavior component of it that just really makes the difference. And 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 I love that because I believe one of the things I believe is people first, task second. And I, I think that that lends itself to saying, hey, let's get to know the person. Let's understand this person. And you talk about behavior and that truly is, you know, where we all respond or react to the, the circumstance in the world around us. When you can grasp and better, I don't want to say control behavior. Then you're bet you're you know you have the potential to improve your leadership skills as a servant leader. Yeah, something you said is is a controversial topic in servant leadership, and you know we hear the word manipulate and we automatically mm. think a negative connotation right. of that word. But here's the deal, and, and I work with uh, outside of the business world. I work with people who struggle with addiction and and you know some certain things that aren't you know positive. Mm -hmm. But here's how here's how I look at it, too, that sometimes helps people. If, if you're addicted to something, I really need to manipulate your mind to find a new new avenue or a new mm -hmm. path. Right? right. So when we think about servant leadership, it is the manipulation of behaviors. Mm -hmm. But again, we hear manipulation and we think awful things. It, it's how we're hardwired to go to negative before positive. Yeah. But if I have an employee and, and I've had this specific example, I've had employees in my previous life that just spent money and who are always broke with their checks. Mm -hmm. And so what I started to do was help manipulate their mind to start saving and start looking at behaviors. 
And so when we sat down and really looked at you, you're blowing, you know, 75% of your check on food and going out instead of, you know, saving and budgeting. So I manipulated the behavior to start embracing budgeting. Mm. But I think with servant leadership, we get we, like when we hear servant leadership, we think, you know, soft and loving and caring and, and it is right. You, yeah. you do. You want to love people, right? I lead with love. It's, it's my number one principle. Right. But leading with love doesn't mean you you baby them. It doesn't mm. mean you cater them. It goes back to my my point earlier. This individual may thrive under pressure like that's yeah. how they love it because they played sports in high school and they understand that. So for me to serve them, I really need to be a little harder on them, but it's not harder in the wrong way. It's right. just how they operate. So when we think of manipulation. I'm really trying to manipulate better patterns for you, better behavior. But yeah. I think the first thing we got to do is not put, you know, a negative view on words. And it's always about the context, right? Mm -hmm. We hear something and we're like, oh my gosh, we need this. And I'm like, no, what was the context of the there word? What was the context? Yeah. We love our sound bites, but we miss the bigger context of yeah. the whole. So good. Dustin, this, the second thing you shared with me, which I think is really interesting is not letting your ego in between your ears. So yeah. what what does that mean to you and how does that kind of inspire you? So I, I talk about that a lot in my training, especially in the mm -hmm. leadership training. And the phrase, exact phrase is, don't let your ego become your ears. Ooh. And And the one thing that I could not stand was trying to talk to somebody who wouldn't listen. And typically it was a leader. <laughs> it was somebody above me. <laughs> Uh, but I'll tell you, I was also that individual because again, going back to earlier, you're, you mimic what you're taught. Mm. I unfortunately, in my early twenties, worked for a lot of micromanagers and people who had some very big egos. So for me, I'm over here being a young, cocky 20 year old. I'm like, that's right. When I give a direction, that's all it's going to be, you know? And, <laughs> and so that, that phrase kind of came through you know, through the years as I matured a little bit. But the mm -hmm. point being is that like success is a great thing and I love success. You know, we have to have success to embrace failure and vice versa, you know, so you appreciate it. Yeah. But the problem is when the ego starts to kick in and that's all that there is in terms of success, meaning it's very easy for people to step back and say, look at what I built you know, look at what I've done, especially entrepreneurs, you know, mm -hmm. they build massive wealth and it was them, right? But can they humble themselves enough to, to not let a new idea, a new influence, a new opinion come in and it may make them better, right? right? So when we, when we think about leadership, we see these vice presidents, we see these directors, these ex the C-suite executives, and even some CEOs I've talked to you know, even just in an introduction call, I can't get a word into them because it's like this self-defense mechanism or yeah, that's how we're hardwired. We take attacks sometimes. That's like the like mm. first thing we hear, like, hey, your hair is goofy, Dust. And I'm like, what do you mean my hair is goofy? Like, and it could be that something was off that day. Yeah. But my me. ego says, I got perfect hair, then I'm never going to listen to feedback about hair. Mm. So that that's really my long-winded answer for you is, is we got to be able to take feedback at all levels. And in fact, the second phrase I add on to that, don't let your ego become your ears. The higher you go, the more you shut up. Like I, I can't, I can't ever say that enough. And I was actually doing a training two weeks ago uh, with the company. And I said that exact phrase to them is like, the higher you go, the more you need to shut up because that takes away development from your teams. When you're the only one always giving and giving and giving, let your teams think for themselves. But it goes back to ego, right? Like we yeah. love to hear ourselves talk. Oh my That's gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, Dustin. What a punch. I mean, that statement that, you know, don't let your ego become your ears. The higher you go up, the more you need to shut up. That is a punch that just really resonates so well. And, and I believe when, you know, uh, ego is a, you know, I, it, there's psych psychological terms, but I believe ego is a filter that you, 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 you look through and you live through and that ego can, can create a spirit of offense. Meaning that if somebody tries to give you that feedback, you're like, Hey, like you said, it's a defensive wall. 
And the bigger your spirit of offense, the bigger the wall is. But oh my gosh, Dustin, that is like a that's a profound quote there. And I'm and I'm that's gonna make the sneak peek right there, sir. Um so <laughs> yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. I tell you too, and I just always add this, and, and I always play devil's advocate. Ego can be a good thing in leadership. You know, and, and everybody's like, Dustin, you just said egos. And I'm like, again, it goes back to situational based awareness. Right. So we always have to remember that. So as a young leader, there was a lot of people who doubted my ability at 22 years old. Right. So if I would have fell to their thoughts, meaning if their thoughts became my reality, mm -hmm. I would have just said, no, I can't do it because yeah. well, I was listening to. Them. But I did create this ego that kind of muted the doubt and mm -hmm. the um, negative negativity and work through that. But again, it's can you be situationally aware to flip it on and flip it off yeah. at the right times? We want to work for a leader who's confident. Yeah. Right? Like if, if my leader comes in and shakes hands like a dead fish and is just like <laughs> weak and speaks, you know, soft and is just not very empowering. Yeah. We want, we love confident people. That's why we listen to them. Yeah. Right. So, but again, can we flip it on and flip it off at the right time? Oh my gosh, Dustin, it's like confidence with humility and people see those as polar opposites, but man, they've got to partner up to be really, really successful. One of the, the, the last thing you shared Dustin with me, which I, I really like communication is critical. And I, and I agree with you, but I really want you to unpack this a little bit more. So what does that mean? And, and how's this inspiring you? So the more that I got into speaking, I, I really looked back because what I speak on is what I did, right? It's mm -hmm. like, I, I'm not creating new concepts. It's literally what I did as a, as a corporate leader. And like the one thing that I pinpointed was my communication was better than my peers. And when we think about communication, we automatically go to just speaking. Mm. And part of that, yes, that's communication. That's a huge part of it. <laughs> when you look at this, this, the statistic of it, that word always trips me up. Easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah. 92% of communication is nonverbal. 8% is verbal. I teach this in all my communication classes. So we really have to understand that first. And that's why it's so impactful. Because I, I work with leaders and especially in the executive coaching realm, I, I give these leaders feedback, your face is turning me off before you ever speak. Like your body language is atrocious. Like it's just, it's so negative. But when we hear that, a lot of people say, Dustin, that doesn't matter. I'm like, it matters to your employees. Yeah. It may not matter to you, but it matters to your employees. So when I think of communication, I have a leader that I worked for and, and it was in a merchandising aspect. And we would always get um, feedback from him when we would do a merchandising thing. And his biggest question was, did you do it for you or did you do it for our, our client, our customer? Meaning like, are you just doing things because you like it or is it the right thing to do for the right Ooh. people? Right. So when we think about communication, my pushback when I when I do this training is, are you communi communicating because you like to communicate that way or are you flipping it to make sure it's the right communication for the right person. Again, that situational awareness. Right. And so when we look at why companies fail and really with the implementation model or the change matrix, whatever you want to, whichever way you want to go, like it always fails because communication is awful within this company or within leaders. Mm. It's like we forget that, or sometimes we think when you get a promotion, it's like it, you just stop thinking of development and not always some leaders are good with continuous development but where i'm trying to take that is is like i've seen people get this promotion and then they become something totally they're not mm. and it's not that you 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 have to change with promotions but it's like they stop communicating and, and i can for the life of me never figure out like the higher these individuals go up the ladder the less they communicate the right way and it's confusing to me. And I think we hear the term chain of command and boundaries and healthy work relationships. Yes. Yeah. I say go out and drink with your employees. I'll never condone that. But what I am saying is don't forget what it was like to be that employee that put five bucks in the gas tank trying to get to next week. You probably were there at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. 
So when we think about communication, whether I'm a VP, a director, or a supervisor at whatever level, I need to be able to communicate back to that individual's environment. So it's really meeting the employees where they're at. Ooh. And, you know, not, not everybody was exposed to proper speaking. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with some supervisors in my past that had what I would, you know, call that low income environment speech, you know, and I came from a low income environment, did not mm -hmm. have a lot of money growing up whatsoever. I didn't really become the person you hear articulating today until like my mid twenties. I, I had really bad speech patterns and just sounded awful <laughs> going through <laughs> career, but that's when I realized how important communication is. And then the last thing I'll, I'll add to it on a more personal side, outside of the professional side, nothing's more frustrating than when we can't communicate how we feel as human mm -hmm. beings. Yeah. Think about that. Like yeah. when you're sad, you want to communicate you're sad. And so we see conflict arise and we see these, you know, injustices happening because we can't communicate effectively. And so if you go outside your professional life and you struggle to communicate in your personal life to your spouse, your kids, to your family, that only carries over into your professional world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's an ever evolving development. Wow. Dustin, I can I just see all of your inspirational points. Just they all connect so well because you start with servant leadership and, and you're meeting people where they are and touch, you know, and supporting them how they need to be touched and your ego with the confidence and humility. Um, and then the higher you go, the more you got to shut up. I, I, I love that so much. It's such a great quote. And then communicating, communicating the way people need to be communicated to. I mean, there's so much to unpack there. I mean, there's different, you know, love languages and life languages and communication patterns and appreciation uh, languages. But there's, but you really do break it down. And I think this is, you know, to kind of quote what you shared earlier, you break it down into something simple that we can all truly grasp and understand and build from there. So, Dustin, this has been a fantastic conversation with yes. you. and. Man, I could, you're speaking my language and, and I could talk to you for, for hours, but we're getting close to the end of our time. And I want to give you an opportunity to share a closing thought before we wrap up. I tell you, my, my closing thought never changes. It's always the same. People tell me get a new one, but I, <laughs> I love it too much. And it's the fact that no matter what you do in life, your, your job is to make everybody else around you better. And it's plain and simple. I mean, it really is. And so I want everybody who's listening to understand you can be a leader without being a leader. And, and that's where we get it wrong is, as this country. And, I, and I'm very firm believer in that. We, we think you have to be in charge of somebody or something to be a leader. But that's not the case at all. You always have a shadow that people are watching. And, and actually, in my first book, that's one of the lessons. Your shadow is your leadership. And so if, if people see you, meaning your neighbors see you cleaning up your life or cleaning up your lawn or doing something, that does have an impact on them. You just may not realize it. So I would encourage everybody for a final thought is remember that everybody around you is always looking at you and you have an opportunity to do something so great and, and not profound, but something so simple and so great that makes them better because they knew you. Wow, Dustin, that is, that's, I don't, even, I don't even know the words for that, but that is powerful for, I mean, wherever you're at, be the example, uh, just be the light for others to really see a, a positive example. So Dustin, thank you so much. Guys, make sure you run out there and check out Dustin, his website. I'm going to put the link to his website on the show notes. I'm also going to put the link to his two books, not one, but two books on servant leadership, and that way you go grab a copy, go grab a copy for a friend as well. Dustin, thank you so much for joining me this this day and, and sharing with us. It has been great to chat with you and I've learned, got a great quote from you, man. This is so powerful. Use it. Um, I never trained Mark I'm use them, man. <laughs> well, I'm gonna put your name on it so you'll get there the you you'll get the credit. But again, thank you so much for, for joining me today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. And we will see you on the next episode.